Okay, and welcome back. So I'm going to talk to you about optimization, and this is going to be a general outline for optimization word problems. The first thing you're going to want to do is determine the function type. Figure out what kind of function you're going to end up with. It might be a business calculus application where you're going to have to maximize something that has to do with the production or labor. It could be area, it could be volume, it could be cost or distance, or any other type that I'm not mentioning right here. So the next thing you're going to want to do is sketch out a drawing. You're going to have to read carefully and try to make the drawing as accurate as you can based off of the given that you've gotten from the problem. The next thing you're going to want to do is determine the geometric shapes you're dealing with. If you have any that are nested, you're going to want to separate them. After that, you're going to want to assign variables to those lengths. So you may want to check for similar lengths because similar lengths have the same variable. You're going to want to use geometry theorems and definitions to help derive relationships. For the most part, a lot of the stuff's going to be pretty simple, but as long as you took your geometry class and you did fairly well in it, everything you remember is stuff that you'll need for these kind of problems. Apply known formulas to the geometry. Okay. So, I'll give you an example. You're dealing with a right triangle, you're going to use Pythagorean theorem. If you have a trapezoid, you're going to be using the trapezoid formula. Different figures, different formulas. Make sure you know your volume formulas, area formulas, surface area formulas, and so forth. Now, based off what you have, can a formula be derived? Okay, if you can't, there's a couple things you can look at. First of all, Sometimes you're using the wrong variable. You're making the function in terms of the wrong variable. So just double check, make sure you make the function in terms of the correct variable. Sometimes you're not given all the information you need, but you're given some information that helps you derive other information. That's why I say assign a constant variable, such as a capital letter, to lengths that complete the minimum requirements to relate figures. You're going to want to look for perpendicular lengths whose assigned variable is what the function is in terms of. So what that means is if the function itself is in terms of maybe h and r for height and radius, and if the height is on the same line as another length that has to do with height itself, maybe you may want to make the function in terms of r, the radius itself, if you're dealing with a conic type shape. So that's what that means. Make a cross-section diagram, rotate, draw lines, slice, fold, or curl shapes. Okay, so all this is pretty obvious. Cross-section, you know what that is, rotate, and so forth. The curl shapes, what I mean by that is, let's say you start off with a circle, and you cut a sector out and throw it away. If you take those two sides where the sector was cut out, and you connect them together, you're going to end up with a cone, and that's what you're trying to optimize, the volume of that cone. Okay, and if you're getting stuck you might want to check with number four. And on step four, it's assigning variables to lengths. You may have assigned variables to lengths that don't have anything to do with solving the problem. Now, let's say you check that and you come back here, and this is your second time at this point again. In that case, there might be something wrong with the picture itself, so you're going to have to go to step number two. What you're going to have to do is go back and read carefully and make sure that the drawing itself interprets what the words say and see if there's something you missed or overlooked. Okay, and once you have that, you can move on to step six, and that's finding the domain of the function. Now this is important because you want to test out the endpoints if you have any. And the reason for that is to check to see if the function works. Because if the numbers don't match logically, you're going to have to go back to step five. And step five has to do with the function itself. It might be something about the formula you used, it could be the way it was derived. You're going to have to check a couple things, so you'll have to go back a few steps and check to see what's wrong. Another reason you want to test out the endpoints is because it's possible that an endpoint can actually be a maximum or a minimum. So you got to be careful about that. And if the numbers do make logical sense, then basically you're almost done. And that's the most difficult part, deriving the formula itself. Once it's working, you're basically done. The rest of it's simple. Next, you're going to differentiate. You're going to have to take the first derivative and find the extremum. You're going to want to determine where extrema are located by setting the first derivative to zero and that the results are within the domain. That's why checking the endpoints is important. 
Then you're going to take the second derivative. And in a nutshell, let me explain what you're going to do. What you got by taking the first derivative, setting it to zero, the result you got from that, you're going to plug it into the second derivative to check the concavity. The concavity will let you know if you have a minimum or a maximum at that point. If you get a positive number, it's concave up, you got a minimum. If it's negative, it's concave down, you got a maximum. Then you're going to interpret your answer. And what I mean by that is you're going to want to check to see if the results you got are within range. Did you get a maximum area? Did you get a minimum distance? Whatever it is, you're going to want to check the yielded results. You're going to want to read the question one more time if you're not sure what you're answering. You'll want to evaluate the endpoints as well as the resulting extremum in the derived function and then compare the values and determine your answer that way. And the last part is optional. You can provide further analysis of the behavior of the function using what you know about the first and second derivative. Function to first, function to second, second to first, first to second. They're all connected together. So you got to know what that is. And the last part is something that you should ask yourself. It's a question, what else do I know that helps me? Now, here are the things that I put that would be common to you and I while we do these kind of problems. These are the kind of things you should keep in mind that actually you know, you have these things. I'm, I wouldn't put anything here that only I would know. I would put things in here that I find that would be common to you and I. And one of them is strong geometry. Y you need to have pretty strong geometry. It's going to help you out with the geometric shapes and when it comes down to generating a formula. It, it, it helps to have you know, good geometry skills and know a lot of the formulas from geometry. So that's why I say you should always keep all your math books. Another thing is before you came, before you started working with optimization problems, you did related rates problems. Related rates problems will help you in trying to derive formulas for these types of problems. The more related rates problems you do, the easier time you'll have deriving formulas for optimization. Being strong in fractions. What I mean by that is when you're differentiating, sometimes you end up with these really large and long complex fractions. So it really helps to be strong in fractions, being able to manipulate complex fractions in your head. So that way it makes the differentiation process a lot easier. The next thing is strong graph theory. Strong graph theory is the relationship between the first derivative, the second derivative, and the original function. Knowing the domain of the function itself, knowing that when you increase x a little bit, you should be able to visualize a point on the graph moving along the curve. And at the same time, while you're looking at that, you should also see the figure. So you have to be able to keep track of that kind of information in your head. That's why you need to have strong graph theory. And the last thing I want to mention is just a tip when it comes to these kind of problems and in general. Don't be so quick to expand or use a distributive property, but do try to consolidate variables and factor out constants. Now, what I mean by that is this first lasso right here, the relationship of that tip to, to deriving the formula is this. Here's how they connect. Sometimes when you are deriving the formula, you'll want to expand powered binomials or trinomials. Sometimes it's better just to leave it alone, okay? Um, and the other connection this has is with derivatives. And basically it means the same thing. If you can kind of leave it the way it is, um, it's less work, less hassle for you in the future. You're better off just using a lot more uh, chain rule than you are trying to distribute and make a big mess on the page. Um, as a matter of fact, when you have the formula itself, after you derive the function itself, it's best to either factor in a variable and consolidate or just leave it the way it is and then take the first derivative based off of what you have there. As soon as you start trying to distribute, it, it makes a mess and you're more likely to make a mistake. So that's why I say don't be so quick to expand. But you can actually play this back while you're doing problems. Some require a little more theory than others, but for the most part, this should pretty much take care of most problems you'll run into on a homework or a test. So anyway, to wrap things up, I would say if you're going to be working on a problem, you can start this from the beginning and just let it play and pause it right when you get to a certain step and work on the problem a little bit, hit play again and keep on going 
And when you get stuck, you can just backtrack a little bit. Well, I hope this was helpful. With that said, good luck with your homework and tests in the future, and thank you for watching.